everybody, this is Vic from Vic's Creative Corner. Today we're going to talk about the Xbox Series X and running it on a monitor with using a 4K60 MK2 capture card in your internal PC at the highest refresh rate that you can get out of your Xbox Series X or S. So to start, you always want to make sure that your console is plugged in to your capture card as the input, which is internal with this particular card. And then your output is going to your monitor. And in this case, we're using the Corsair Zineon monitor that has a refresh rate of 165 Hertz, but we're only gonna be able to take advantage of 120. Now, the max optimal settings you can get for this, for the Xbox using the capture card to pass through is going to be 1440p, 120 hertz. Now you can downscale this to 1080p or 720p at 120 hertz with the Xbox Series S or X. And in this case, we're using the X for this example. Now you can see it clearly have OBS set up, so we'll be jumping into that very shortly. Stay tuned because there's another video coming and we're gonna be talking about the PlayStation 5 very shortly. Alrighty, everybody. So as you can see, we're now into the Xbox and we're going into the settings. So that way we can go ahead and look at refresh rate possibilities using this particular setup for those who actually want a higher refresh rate. All right, here we go. We're going to go to TV and display options. Oh, mine is already set. So primarily most people who are hooked into a TV that have the VRR variable refresh rate which is going to be 120 hertz. Um, your format is going to change to 4K UHD 60 hertz once you actually start capturing stuff because the pass-through can only do 4K 60 hertz. Um, my monitor is the Corsair Zineon monitor, so it is capable of doing 165 hertz, although I usually run things at 144, I think is what it is. Yeah. Any, or in this case, we're gonna do 120 hertz because that's what it's gonna permit me to do. So first thing we're gonna do is talk about the, the resolutions. If I go to 1440p, I'm gonna be able to see the refresh options. I have 60 hertz and I have 120 hertz. Yes, I'm gonna change it to 120 hertz, but I want you all to see the options that you're presented with. Most people are streaming at 1080p. So with this pass through that I have, because the monitor is capable of pushing out 144 hertz, this one only gives me the option of 120 hertz. So I can change it to a 1080p 120 hertz or leave it at 60 hertz. 720p. I ran into an issue with 720p. Most people usually don't capture on this, but some people do have this option because of their um, monitor setup or because they have things set up a certain way to output to Twitch, so that way they're not taking up too much internet bandwidth when they're actually streaming. So it gives you the 120 hertz option, but this is the thing that I encounter every time I do it under 720p at 60 hertz. When I switch it to 120, it auto defaults to what the maximum output settings for the resolution is on this monitor. So it brings me back to 1440p, 120 hertz as pass-through which means that I can capture that, I can output it at 1080p 60 uh, hertz or FPS. That's the most that I can do. And that's just because of the way that the pass-through works. We're gonna talk about PlayStation 5 here very shortly because I do have to switch out the consoles, but this is the optimal setting that you can actually set it up. So it's pretty simple. You just come here, you can change the resolution or and you see how when you change it, it goes back to 60 hertz. But if I wanna just change the refresh rate, it's gonna auto detect what are the best settings for me. And then let me pass that through. And then I can just use this to capture whatever game. I totally enjoy this game, by the way. And you can catch me live on Vic's Gaming Corner. But uh, I, I appreciate you all tuning in here to Vic's Creative Corner. So we're gonna do a quick test run of the video game here and see the difference in frame rate. You all will see it at 60, but I'll be able to see it at 120 as you all saw how it was set up. 
So that way we avoid copyright strikes. We're going to go ahead and just bypass all of this. Yep. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's been a while since I popped in on this, though. I really do enjoy Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, though. We're going to click on continue. Uh, you know what? This is my autosave file, right? Mm. Okay, let's go here. What? I said yes? Oh, never mind. I forgot to tab up. It's going to take a moment to load, but this thing is pretty, pretty fast. So as you can see, I'm running, and it's running really smooth. There's no jitter or anything. It's really nice. But anyways, I hope this helps you in deciding on how to set up the refresh rate with your Xbox if you have the internal PCIe 4K60 Pro. MK2. Sorry, I meant to say that, but I had my, my rats making noise in the background there. Sorry, y'all. Alrighty. So we're going to jump into the PlayStation 5 here very shortly, and you all are going to see the same setup except with the PS5 console. Uh, I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. We're back, and this time we swapped it out for the PS5 right here. But the only downfall is I actually don't have a game that can run 120 hertz on the PlayStation 5 at this time to give you the demonstration. So unfortunately, I won't be able to give you a preview of that. Sorry, everybody. I was so stoked to do it, and then I realized, oh, I can't do it with it. But thank you for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a wonderful evening.